Hello again. Hopefully you'll all jump back soon. So I had massive delays on that last um, live, so I didn't see anybody saying anything. And I, yeah, um, I don't know where you guys got to, but I was basically just going through the format of today, um, which is that I will chat. Then there'll be questions which you can ask just in the comments throughout while I'm chatting. That's absolutely fine. Um, and then I'm going to go back to you guys. But to start off with, I would really, really love it if you could introduce yourselves. Um, why you want to start a podcast. Um, there's no one here yet. Which is awkward. Okay. Hang on, am I live again now? Am I live again and is everybody there? Yep, Charlie's here, Lisa's here. Okay, so basically I'm going back to, I'm having to look at the comments in a different page because they're not showing up in here. Um, I can see that you've joined, but. So Lisa, you're Lisa and interested in starting a podcast as you want to learn a new skill and get to know so many more people to know so many more people about their journey in building a business while juggling other commitments. So your why is that you want to increase your community. Is that correct? Hi, Daisy. Um, cool. That's an awesome start of a why. That's great. Um, and it's so lovely to have starting a podcast as learning a new skill. Also, don't be shy about saying, thanks, thanks, Daisy. Um, yeah, don't be shy about saying if you want to, um, if you if you want to start a podcast because you want to add another income stream or anything like that, anything that you might feel isn't the dumb thing because it totally is. Um, Daisy, you live in Devon with your four boys, homeschool, traditional school and travel as much as you can. You run a hand dyed yarn company, offer small business mentoring and I'm starting a lifestyle travel blog. I've had a year ish off and want to come back with something new to inspire me. I'm also looking to increase sales of a new product and hoping the podcast will help bring together a few ideas I've had floating around for a while, but I couldn't tie together. That is um, a super exciting um, reason to start a podcast. And um, I think starting a podcast will do all of those things. It certainly did for me. Um, specifically, sales of your new product. Um, a podcast is great for driving sales. Great. Okay, I'm just going to quickly go back to the other thread and then I will come back to this one. So Claire, you're a qualified occupational therapist, but in previous times you completed an MA in radio. I'm not very te technically literate, but I want to start a podcast because I think there's something amazing about audio. I want to interview people I think are amazing at being creatives, entrepreneurs and bloggers they are. Yes, that's amazing. Yeah, that's kind of I think why I started a podcast I, did, I wasn't very strategic about it I just kind of had the urge to start one there is something amazing about audio it's so so much more intimate than any other form of content creation more intimate than video and um, I don't know if you guys know much about stats around podcasting but people who listen to podcasts are so much more engaged 
so much more engaged. They drive so much more sales. Um, so a traditional advertising jingle that, or yeah, an, an advert in a podcast will drive seven times the amount of sales that it would in video. It's huge. It's crazy. Um, and the, and the recall that people who listen to podcasts have about a brand name is much, much higher. It's something crazy, like 70% higher or something than other forms of advertising. Ruth, you live in Kent. Oh, I didn't know you lived in Kent. Whereabouts in Kent do you live? Oh, actually, you don't have to say that. <laughs> I'm from Kent. Been working online for a long time, but recently started something new. Having my baby in December was the kick up the arse I needed. So I'm really connecting to my creative side and I've been blogging about running an intentional business an intentional and joyful business. As yet, I'm still a bit unsure of direction, but I love podcasts and I love getting philosophical about business and life. So that's why I want to start a podcast. I want to grow my audience too, but in a very authentic, non-salesy way. So, yes, an authentic, non-salesy way to drive sales. <laughs> podcast is great for that, but um, you still have to sell. If you want to sell, you still have to sell. So even though it's on a podcast, I don't know, like you might have examples of people that you see as selling in a non-salesy way, but I can almost guarantee that they are intentionally selling to you and it can still be authentic. And we just have to become comfortable with the fact that we make products and we're allowed to sell them to our audience because they can check out when they want to. Um, but that's probably a whole other thing. And actually, I'm not, I'm not the best person to talk about that in a way because I, I'm rubbish at it. Um, yep, Daisy, no shame. Good. Ruth. Oh, Folkestone. I got my wedding dress in Folkestone. I'm from Herne Bay. Oh, you haven't bought anything due to a podcast ever but you've definitely bought the product being discussed. Yes, but that's the same thing, isn't it? So even though they're not adver advertising it officially, they might not be sponsored by, by um, the person who they're referring to. It's, it still kind of counts. It's like brand name recall, isn't it? Um, and I've certainly increased my income through a number of different sales. I wouldn't even say the tactics, but a number, number of different selling points that you can use in a podcast so affiliate income and we can talk about monetization today if that's something that you'd like um i'm going to go into just chatting a little bit about why you want to, might want to start a podcast also things that you need to think about before starting and i discussed some of these or noted some of these in the workbook that i gave you guys so, first of all, format. I think most of you seem to have a bit of an idea in, oh, Charlie, did you answer? Charlie Swift, you are here, let me just double check. And it's totally, oh, there you are. <laughs> You're a podcast addict. <laughs> we should, we all have to say right now, hi, Charlie. <laughs> I've been saying I wanna start a podcast for years, I have a lot of ideas in the We want to share down to earth, honest chats that have been so valuable to us and hope other self-employed ladies will feel the same. I would like to grow my community, raise my profile, and also just really want to add <laughs> podcasts to your bio. Um, yeah, I think you'll definitely be able to do that. So is your business bestie love Audrey? Um, okay, great. So you've all talked about who you are, what your ideas are, think the format seems like for a lot of you it's going to be interview style Ruth I don't know if you said and I don't know if you know if your format is going to be interview style but I'm just going to talk a little bit about the different types of things that you can do so obviously m the majority of you listen to podcasts in fact most people listen to most podcast listeners don't just listen to one podcast they listen to on average seven so you probably don't just listen to one style. One of the 
probably most popular styles or the most obvious style of podcast is the interview format. That's obviously what my show it is, it's interview format. But that's not to say you can't mix it up because I've also done solo episodes too. And I think as you get more confident, you can start to mix it up. Um, interview format is great for a few reasons. When you're starting out, it's brilliant to boost your confidence because you're not the main person talking. In fact, you shouldn't be talking all that much at all. Um, and you don't need to talk much at all at the start. So if you really hate listening to your own voice, which you probably will at the beginning, um, especially if you're editing yourself, um, interview format is great because you can just cringe through your bits and then you just listen to your guests. The other great things about doing it in interview format is that when you have somebody else who wants to talk about themselves, and believe me, everybody wants to talk about themselves, they will also want to promote it to their audience. So when it comes to self-promotion, which I know a lot of us feel a little bit icky about, having an interview format is perfect. Um, and it kind of gets us out of our own echo chamber. Um, we want, we don't just want to be advertising to our Instagram audience and just increasing our, you know, increasing popularity within our own Instagram audience or blog audience or Twitter audience or wherever you tend to have your best engagement or tend to promote your stuff. Um, I've certainly seen, I mean, Charlie mentioned raising her profile and yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's certainly raised my profile. Um, and that kind of speaks to off page SEO as well. So um interview format is great the downsides to having an interview style podcast is that it's another layer of logistics and admin to manage so obviously you have to engage with your guests engage them and ask them to be on the podcast i'm going to give you a lot of tools to help you manage guests um so don't worry too much about that and I certainly wouldn't ever want you to feel put off. But one of the questions I asked you in the workbook was how much time you realistically have to spend on your podcast each week. Because if you only have half an hour to spend on your podcast each week, then I would suggest that you should think twice about having um, interview style at least every week. Because the, yeah, because of the logistics really and the, Everything takes a little bit longer when you have two people. You have to obviously engage your guests. You have to schedule a call. You have to have the call. You then have to edit two people. Um, and at the start, that might feel a bit more clunky because you might talk over each other a little bit. If they're not a podcaster, they'll certainly talk over you or feel the need to fill silences. Um, so the editing process takes a little bit longer when there's two of you. Thereafter, you'll perhaps have to send them show notes, ask them for images, um, let them know when it's gone live and give them links and things like that. This isn't a long process, but I want, and it certainly isn't a long process for me now, but I, I want you to be aware of that. The other style is obviously solo episodes. So people who do solo episodes really well. Hmm. Sarah Tasker has, has mixed up and done solo episodes. I think quite a lot of businessy style podcasts kind of mix it up. Um, Jen Carrington does great solo episodes. Lola Hode and One Girl Band. I'm trying to think of people outside of just business podcasts that do solo episodes. There's probably loads of them that, in fact, there will be loads of them that I don't listen to. Um, yeah, so there's solo episodes where literally you can, oh, Gabrielle Trainer does completely solo episodes and they're really, really good. She She's a great example of somebody who does simple solo format episodes where she just talks, they're very short, they're 
I was going to say low production, but they're not low production because they're they're good, really good quality. But they're, I, I would say, fairly uh, fairly easy to produce. Um, and for whatever topic you're doing, you can create a solo episode, a solo style podcast. I suppose the only difficulty there comes in if you are very uncomfortable speaking, um, if you don't want it to be about you at all, if you struggle to come up with ideas, um, and if your topic isn't really narrowed down and niche, because I think a solo episode could easily fall into just losing the plot and just be a ramble every week the which that's probably the downside to a solo episode the other downside is that it's it's just you doing it so it it's just a lot more pressure on yourself probably um you have to think about a script um probably more so than if you're doing an interview style because there you don't really need to work with a script. Um, however, I think it's a really, really good idea to have a mixture of the two. So I think it's a really good idea to have an interview style podcast with solo episodes dropped in because it, it builds trust with your audience. Although your audience will get to know you throughout the process of your podcast, even if you're interviewing other people, the solo episodes can be a really, really good way for them to quickly get to know you. Um, and for those of you who want to sell things, sell your products or make money through affiliate income or grow your audience, that's pretty important. So I would think about mixing up the two. And one more style, because I'm not going to go into things like Monocle, the Monocle podcast or This American Life. I don't think anybody wants to do a serial or anything like that. <clears throat> but if you do, all power to you. But um, I would say that that will be high production and a lot of effort. <laughs> so the other style that you can do is work with a co-host and record in person or over Skype. And it's obviously not an interview because it's just the two of you chatting. Charlie, I think that's what you're doing, isn't it? I really, really, really love this style of podcast. It's one of my favorite styles of podcast is two co-hosts chatting. I think it's it's the, the feeling I get when I listen to other people doing this is the feeling that people say they get when they listen to my podcast. Um, so you can get it with interview style, but I think just a, a co-hosts, Oh, the best. I would love to do a podcast with somebody else, but um, I don't think anyone's interested in doing that with me. But <laughs> yeah, so I would say that is just one of the dreamiest styles. The downside to this is that I think it's a lot more time consuming. The best types of co hosty podcasts tend to be when the two people are in the same room. Um, it's a lot easier from an audio point of view and production point of view and just from a flow point of view if you're both in the same room. Um, I will tell you a few tricks for audio, um, making the audio sound better and some tools that you can use um, to record your podcast. But my number one tip would be that you should do the least amount of editing try and it's a bit like when you're taking pictures just try and get it right on your camera and um, try not to rely too much on editing oh i'm just going to check the comments interviews and solo oh claire Weeks, yoga girl yes yoga girl she does beautiful storytelling she doesn't even work with a script either um she's an anomaly i would say <laughs> elise joy Mindful Kind, nice solo show. Yeah, so there are quite a lot of solo shows <laughs> that I don't really listen to. But Yoga Girl, I love her solo episodes. She does a mix, but she mostly does solo shows and they're my favourite. They're just, 
they're the best. She's really charismatic. She's very confident. She's quite extroverted. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about who you're marketing your podcast to. When I started my podcast, I didn't necessarily, no, I had a very strong reason why I wanted to do it and a very strong idea of who I wanted to listen to it. Although I don't think I realized I did at the time, if that makes sense. So I knew the same as my whole reason for everything, really. My why is to cut through that bullshit. I should have said explicit at the start. I mean, I have a potty mouth, so I will just drop swear words in. I'm so sorry. So if there are any, if you have your kids listening, then actually, you know what? I will, I will stop swearing. Um, to cut through the BS and to help the blogger that I was um, realize that you don't have to follow a blueprint. You don't have to follow the rules and you can still be successful your version of success without doing what xyz has done so that was a really strong kind of why for me and the who came from that i wanted basically me when i started blogging and i think i've and i i think i've achieved that and then i've gone a bit further as well so have you all thought about your who and your why I'm going to carry on talking, but I'd love you to just pop that in the comments for me. A note on finding your why. Um, I popped a link in the group because I thought I'd link to it in the PDF that I gave you, but I hadn't, which is incredibly unhelpful of me. I blame Merc Mercury in retrograde. Um, finding your why, I, I found really, really difficult, really, really difficult. It's a bit like honing in on your niche. I've always found that a really stressful, overwhelming task. Um, but it's, it's, it doesn't have to be. I know that the thread that runs through everything for me is honesty. I know that I want to make my audience on every platform feel safe and I want them to laugh and I want them to feel like they connect with me in a way that isn't hashtag authentic, it's cozy. So having a few words that you might want your audience to feel can also really bolster your who and your why. I don't know if any of this is making sense, Please ask questions if you have any. Um, ah, there we go. There's a bit of a delay. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Swear away. Ours will always be in-person two-handed chats. Our plan is to meet up and batch record a few episodes at a time. I was thinking that almost pretending we were actually broadcasting live to avoid having to do lots of editing. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea, Charlie. And um, I'm going to talk about editing a little bit. I was going to talk about editing a little bit in the next chunk but I actually think maybe I'll talk conceptually about editing now um, because audio audio is really contentious and editing is really contentious and I think people get really stressed about it the most important thing like with anything is that your content is bang on that it's just awesome that, you know, there will be times when your audio isn't perfect, when someone doesn't, like, finds the fact that you swallowed or slurped a cup of tea or laughed too gregoriously, gregariously, gregoriously, um, really irritating, and they'll stop listening. That's okay. It's panning for gold, isn't it? That's what Jessica Rose Williams says in episode... Series two, episode 18 <laughs> of the podcast, because it's something that Sarah Tasker says, panning for gold. And that is true. Like sometimes you just have to be comfortable with letting people go. I have a review. The only negative review I have is of someone who, who said, I love the content, but this, the audio is so horrific that I had to stop listening. I'm okay with that person not listening to me. Because one, I produce, I produce my podcast for free. 
I pay for it. I, I pay money to produce this content and I do it for other people. I also do it for myself and it has reaped rewards now, but I started off, I didn't earn any money. Um, I pay money every month to host it. It's time out of my day to produce it and put it out there. Um, and it is helpful to people. So I'm okay if someone doesn't want to listen to it because they feel that it's, they need something that's a high production value. I'm okay with that. Um, they are not my ideal person. So I'm just gonna answer one more question. I have a customer base already, so that's my starting point, but also I have a second, I've got a second customer avatar to, to try to bring in new customers for the new product. Second customer avatar, that's exciting. That's very technical. Um, yeah, cool. So I think most of us will have a core customer base already, even if it's 100 people or 500 people. So yeah, it's really good to get to know that person. And like Daisy says, having a second customer avatar is a really honed in way of um, making sure that you're targeting the right people. So, oh, brilliant. The comments are really delayed, so I'm really sorry if I don't get to you like immediately. Ruth, my why is really to talk about the other side of business because that's what connects us as humans, doing things a bit differently. Not how to, but more why people do it, struggles they live with or have overcome, how they want to change the world in a small way. I love that, Ruth. That is such a beautiful why. It's very, it's very thoughtful. Um, and yeah, that's something that people are really interested in hearing. Um, yeah, I love that. There are more typical podcast audience, like mostly women, etc. No. So the number one genre of podcast is comedy. And the number one podcast is What the Fuck with Mark Maron. So it's, it's a mixed bag, but I would say that overall I think it's I think it's fairly 50 50 I think it's fairly 50 50 it might be skewed a bit in terms of it's difficult because the big big podcasts volume wise overall are Mark Maron this American Life serial etc etc and um forgotten his name but it's another kind of ma macho man uh tim robbins um but the, so these take up a huge lion's share of the volume of listeners but there are far more female produced female led podcasts underneath that if that makes sense so it's a bit of a case of the majority are men uh produced and the majority volume are men but there are more podcasts produced by women and listened to by women um and i think for us making podcasts there's such a huge huge audience out there for us um people like us in our stage of life um and the numbers are just going up and up and up as in the listeners are increasing it's crazy, really, because podcasts have been around for so long. I remember I used to listen to, the first podcast I ever listened to was the Chris Moyles podcast. Do you remember that? Um, it was from his Radio 1, his radio show, and they had to stop calling it a podcast because, obviously, podcast is specifically Apple. Um, and they have to call it, I don't know what, I can't remember what they called it, but anyway, and then Ricky Gervais um, was the next one I think I listened to. I want to target women, but part of me worries this is not inclusive or something. No, I don't think so. I think men do all right for themselves. <laughs> I don't think you have to be... I think it's really hard with inclusivity because I think it's different if you're, if you're only targeting or if you're actively trying to discourage a marginalised population from listening to your podcast 
if you want to target women, I think that's absolutely okay. I, I specifically, in my blurb, say it's a, it's a podcast for women. Um, I am, although I do have male listeners, um, I'm not interested in increasing that number at all. Not at all. I, I am a female entrepreneur who wants to sell to other females and wants to support other females. So I think that's fine, Ruth. Uh, my why is basically because I'm nosy. I love that, Rebecca. I love a community of small creative business owners, pretty much all women. And I really want to ask them all the questions. How do you juggle? What do you do? That, where are you going? So many different businesses out there. So many women completely rocking it. And I really want to provide another channel for them to shout about what they do and who they are. I'm hoping that same community will also be my audience to begin with. And that I can grow it wider than that and make it increase the reach of both my business and my guests. Very gentle form of marketing, I suppose. Yes, that sounds like a very gentle form of marketing and a really, really, it sounds brilliant. Like, I want to listen to all of your podcasts. <laughs> Lisa, do you think you need an engaged your audience already in order to attract guests to your podcast? Reason, I'm finding it tiresome slightly poop on Instagram, etc. like I'm pulling teeth. Don't want to turn this into an Instagram show. Okay, so no, I don't think you need an engaged audience already in order to attract guests to your podcast. I think it's iterative. Um, the people that came to my podcast then came to my Instagram and then started reading my blog. It's all a circle. So my most engaged audience are my podcast audience and my Instagram. I already had a very engaged Instagram audience when I started the podcast. No, I had, a, I had an engaged audience when I started the podcast and then the two increase each other. That's probably what I would say. I would also ask why you want to grow your Instagram because it, does it serve you? Um, that's always my question. I'm the annoying, but why, but why, but why? Um, yeah, don't, don't worry about that because yeah, just don't worry about that. You, de you definitely don't need an engaged audience already to, uh, oh yes, you also said to attract guests. Um, no, I wouldn't say so, not even remotely. So attracting guests to your podcast, this will be a really short and helpful answer, I hope, and hopeful as well. I have, nobody has, one person has said no to me, and that was just because they were too busy. And actually, I forgot to go back to them. They gave me a time, they were like, oh, I'm really busy right now, but get back to me in January. And I forgot to go back to them. Um, so out of like 60 people that I've asked probably, one person said no. Um, people don't say no to being on a podcast for any other reason than that they're busy. Um, because, and they, I've never had anybody ask, what's your audience like? Is it engaged? I want to see your stats. People love talking about themselves. They love it. They love the opportunity to spend an hour chatting about them and their life it's really flattering so attracting guests is not is you don't need to attract guests because you'll go out and ask them and then also you'll probably find that after a certain amount of time people will start asking you to be on your podcast so and if they don't that's okay too um i will put in i have some bonuses for you guys um to help you manage guests um, so some templates for, not just to manage guests, but I'll, as part of the templates that I'm going to give you guys, um, is a guest pitch. So inviting a guest onto your show, um, sending them the email afterwards with all the links and stuff like that, which I don't actually, do I do that anymore? Yeah, I do, I do. Um, and what else do I do? Am I going to give you a big spreadsheet <laughs> that I use to manage each season of the podcast? It's a bit like a flow, a pipeline. Don't know what to call it. Um, and also a template for show notes because, yeah, show notes can be a bit of a ball ache. But if you just keep it simple and have a bit of a template for it, then it's just a copy and paste job each week. Claire. I guess I'm thinking my who is 
people probably mostly female creative types between 25 to um, whatever. My why is to showcase freaking awesome individuals, produce valuable content, add something of value about entrepreneurship, bloggers, creatives, but also adding something about well-being and life. Random. <laughs> I don't think that's random. I think um, it sounds like you haven't quite got your why yet. Um, but that's okay because that will come. <laughs> oh, Commode Show. Yes, of course. Adam and Joe on XFM. Yes, Charlie. Um, Lisa, I found that once I start chatting to my female business friends contacts, they open up with how they're finding me. Yes, and everyone has similar issues, but don't share them openly. Totally, 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 totally. Um, that's the brilliant thing about podcasting as well. When you're chatting to people via audio, I think um, it's, it's sort of less formal. If you can cultivate a nice, safe place where people feel really comfortable chatting, you can get some real juicy nuggets. Yes, so people do ask me now to be on my podcast, um, but they did quite early on. Um, and it's not, it's not something to, to serve anyone's ego. People just do ask. Um, people get to know you and 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 I think that really speaks to the fact that everybody wants to be interviewed everybody wants to have an hour where they're talking about themselves most people similar audience to others self-employed freelance females or those who aspire to be your why is to make people feel less lonely in their biz we love the inspirational type business podcast, but also feel there's room for more honest conversations that admit that have conversations that admit we're all sometimes winging it. Yes, I completely agree. I think, I think that having a co-host is a really good way of doing it. You're already friends. It's really hard, and I, it's certainly something that I do. In what she said, is that. I try and pull out the nuggets of honesty. There's no, there's no BS, I think. Um, so I, I completely agree with you. I find that one of the podcasts that irritate me the most are the ones that uh, gloss over privilege around, and I'm not talking about white privilege or any, I'm talking about business privilege. Um, when people wax lyrical about how just post your best pictures and use the best hashtags um, and don't worry about growth and da 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 da. They, they can irritate me a bit um, because it's really all right to say that, isn't it, when you've already got millions of followers. <laughs> I think it's quite nice when somebody says, oh, actually, you know what, I only posted pictures of peonies for a year so that I could get those numbers. Charlie, I didn't even notice your awful typing. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, so we've talked a bit about, we talked quite a lot about format, who, why. Now I want to talk about your name. If anyone feels brave enough, by the way, please just put what, you know, your podcast name in the present tense as if you've already got your podcast. I want you to start thinking as podcasters. You're all in my eyes, podcasters. So Charlie, put that in your bio now. Actually, maybe that should be homework. I want you to all go away and put in your bio on Instagram, Twitter, wherever, <laughs> that you're a podcaster. Okay, so names. Excuse me while I refer to my names. Name is a really hard topic when it comes to podcasts because I sort of, yes, Ruth, do it. Um, in fact, I'm going to write it down because I'm going to come back to that and make you do it. Um, I feel like the name of your podcast is a bit like the name of your blog or the theme that you pick or your web design or whatever. Um, 
you'll probably wish it was something else at some point. <laughs> it's one of those things, isn't it? When you pick an Instagram handle um, in 2011, you're like, oh, really? Did I really want to be Fluffy Knockers 523? Um, I would say that the name of your podcast does matter. Of course it matters, but don't get too hung up about it. However, don't change it. There are a few different ways that you could go. And I hate to be a broken record, but it all comes back to thinking about who you're marketing to, marketing to and what your why is. So you could go for silly or funny. There are some great podcasts that are kind of rude, like um, Guys We Guys We Used to Fuck. Um all killer, no filler. That's a funny one. Um, and they're sort of pu like punny kind of, oh, what the fuck with Mark Maron. I mean, it's WTF, so I probably could have said that instead of swearing. Um, so you could go the silly, funny route. It really depends on what kind of vibe you're going for. You could go for something ironic or clever. I'm trying to think of something off the top of my head that's ironic or clever, but oh, you know what? Hashtag authentic is kind of it's ironic and it's quite clever because it's a bit of a poking fun at hashtags and just both of those words. I always laugh when I hear it, but I remember Sarah saying to me, I wish she was like, I'm so jealous of your name. <laughs> I want to have your name. I was like, no, I like hashtag authentic. She was like, well, I feel like only, only a few people get it and they might think I'm being a dick. So, you know, everybody kind of ends up hating their name. Well, not everybody. Or you could go for really explanatory, like Love Stories by, da um, by Daisy, Dolly Alderton. That's literally just love stories. Um, or Make It Happen by Jane Carrington. Her, she's got such a strong why and she uses that term make it happen a lot if you know her if you i know charlie is as much of a fangirl as i am um you'll know that jen talks about making big things happen and helping people make big things happen so make it happen is yeah it's seamless i came up with my name when i was i think it was even before i was pregnant or early days of being pregnant and we'd gone for a walk no i wasn't even pregnant we were walking the dog and i was saying to ollie oh this is what i just can't think of a name ollie's my husband by the way um and he said what's it about and i said well it's about blogging and about women and how awesome they are and feminism and you know patriarchy and maybe mental health but women like that's who i want to listen to it um i, I want women to listen to it and i want to talk to women and he said what about what she said? Because we listened to it, we watched loads and loads of The Office, the US Office, and if you watch that, you'll know what she said is the thing that, um, what's his face says? Oh my God, Steve Carell's character, basically David Brent. I've forgotten his name in it. Anyway, that's how we came up with it, and I love it. Um, that's probably the only time that I've ever had a name or a branding experience where I've been like, oh my God, I love it. And I've never got bored of it. Um, cool. Okay, you're saying your names. Daisy, your podcast is called Catching My Craft. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love, um, I mean, I know it's not completely alliterative, but I really love alliteration. I from my journalism with my journalism hat on alliteration in a headline um is is a winner on my own terms oh i like that on my own terms on my own terms are you gonna have the ellipsis as well claire don't worry don't worry what is would it help to i think it would help to um brainstorm a little bit the format of your podcast if so this is not just for claire for anybody who's struggling with their name you'll for, plot out your format 
who you want to be listening to your podcast, um, how you want to help them, how you want them to feel. How do you want them to feel when they're listening to it? Do you want them to feel, I hate to use this word, but inspired? Do you want them to feel motivated? Do you want them to come away with actionable, practical tasks? Ruth, yes, same, yeah, same thing. Just you've got a really, really strong why. And we can talk about this offline via email, all of you. Perhaps, Ruth, you mentioned this to me on email. So and I think I said, just drop me an email and we can go through it all together. Friends with business benefits tagline, because it's easier to wing it with a wing woman. Yeah, I like that. That's so good. I love that you've got the tagline as well. Um, because that makes it really clear who it's for. Friends with business, are you going to keep the business benefits in, in um, oh my God, what are they called? <laughs> um, brackets. <laughs> because it's easier to wing it with a wing woman. Yeah, nice. The blog series that I started two years ago, but never started. You've got the fear. Then the hashtag took off an Insta and the podcast will tie it all in together. It's going to be about creatives talk, talking about their businesses and their craft, etc. changing by season. So it's not just about yarn and we'll let you grow each season in a different way if I want to. Daisy, that is so key. That's brilliant. Because, yeah, starting anything in a too, too narrow in a too, too narrow kind of, not leaving yourself room to grow, could just be a pain in the ass, really. Yes, Lisa, yeah. Michael Scott, Michael Scott, yeah. It is, it's a cheeky little reference to the US office, yeah. Does it matter if someone else is already using it? We were gonna go with just friends with benefits, but there are a few others out there. So, yes, it does. It does matter, but unless they've trademarked it, it doesn't matter legally. Um, it, is just helpful if you're the only one doing it. So I was the only one doing it and then some other people have used the same name. So I'm just gonna trademark mine. Um, and people sometimes will use the same name and then put an exclamation mark next to it. Um, Cause that's what happened with me is that they had a different name and then they changed it to my name and then just put an exclamation mark on it. I guess, cause they worried that mine might be trademarked. Um, I would, just for simplicity, I would just do a little iTunes search, uh, sorry, Apple podcast search of the name that you want and just make sure there's nothing too close to it. But also use your judgment. If there is one podcast with the same name as you, but they are in a completely different genre and they only, and they stopped producing podcasts three years ago, then you can take a view and use it, I would say, as long as it's not trademarked. Um, I was going to stick with a version of my business social media name. I've been wanting to change my business name for years and never got around to it because it's pretty well established. It was my knitting blog many, many years ago, but my business has nothing to do with knitting. So I'm thinking I may as well continue in the same vein rather than come up with another name don't want to change at some point. Therefore, I'm thinking posh yarns with others. I like that, posh yarns with others. The only thing I would say is that, is that um, if you have been wanting to change your business name, even though you're already well established, because this is a new chapter, I almost feel like bringing that name and the energy with it might not, it might irritate you. Um, so try and think, don't feel wedded to that. My name had nothing, I was established as Wanderloos. People knew me as that, my audience was that. And I had a much, and I had a big audience then, and it, it didn't matter. Um, yes, I agree with Daisy, your name will just come, just, it might, it might not just come, it might not just appear, but don't, don't force it because I think that will stress you out. Does it matter how long the name is? I think it does. 
I think it does matter how long it is. And I think if you want to have an explanation, then do what Charlie did and have a tagline, have a clear tagline. Um, there are lots of people who just have a simple start. So Fiona Barrows has, there are other ways and then conversations with something like that. I can't remember what it is now, <laughs> but her tagline explains what it is. So you could also do that. Um, and another thing that you could do, um, and this might be more prudent for you, Rebecca, is that you could have a name and then have a by Rebecca Lewis or by Posh Yarns, the podcast from Posh Yarns or something like that. And then as you get more established under your podcast name, you can drop that. Charlie, not sure about the brackets. That might be a visual with the logo branding, but not. Yeah, yeah, nice. I think that's a good idea. So, name. How's everyone feeling about the name? And brainstorming that for, well, you don't have to brainstorm it for next week, to be honest, but just have a little think. I can't emphasize enough, and I hate to be a broken record, but constantly going back to who your podcast is for, how you want people to feel when they're listening to it, and why you're doing it, will help you with everything else that comes along, including the next thing that I'm going to talk about, which is music. So who wants knows that they want music in their podcast because you don't have to have music in your podcast i know plenty of podcasts that are simple they don't have music and it doesn't put me off if you do and i'm going to go ahead and assume that some of you do <clears throat> things that you need to think about are there are plenty and plenty of places where you can get free music um, under a Creative Commons license. But you need to be really, really clear on the licensing because there are, because it's really important basically. So for example, I got my music from Audio Jungle. It's a huge database full of music. I think it cost me about $14. However, I paid for the, what's it called? Royalty licensed royalty anyway so i have commercial i have the i have permission to use my music um for whatever i want on my podcast so if i get sponsorship i'm allowed to, i'm still allowed to use that music um if someone else buys it i'm still allowed to use that music however much money i'm making for my podcast i can use that music that's really important because there's no one size fits all license unfortunately. Um, but you if you have a Creative Commons license, you the kind of two broad brush strokes of, of explaining them is Creative Commons, same as pictures, you can use the music, but you have to credit the um, person in the way that they've asked to be credited. And, and you do have to be quite exact as well. Um, every time you use it. So that would just be in the show notes, I would say, you would probably have to say it in the podcast also. So grief, grief cast, they say music by the glue ensemble. <laughs> so um, I'm guessing the glue ensemble created that music for them under a creative commons. So it was free, but they have to say it every single time. Um, and the other type, let me just check exactly what it's called because I can't remember. I think it's, I think it's royalty free license. I'm just going to double check. Um, basically, the other type doesn't fall into one thing. You have to you have to be kind of specific. Um, because, as I said, Mine is totally fine for commercial use. However, um, I have to upgrade my license because in fact, I'm, I'm 
way over my license because I could only use it for up to 10,000 downloads, um, which I am over by about 20 times. So <laughs> yeah, I massively screwed that up, but it's fine, nobody called me. So I'm upgrading it to a new license for unlimited downloads. So yeah, I'm just gonna type in here If I can pin it, pin comment. Okay, so Audio Jungle is what I use. Um, music. Yeah, so most of you are going to use music. Um, it's quite simple to find something, but I would really, really, really encourage you to do the same as you're doing with the name and kind of leave it at the end leave it until the end, until you feel that you know what your podcast is about. How I decided on the style of my music was based on how I wanted everyone to feel. I knew I wanted my podcast to be honest. I wanted a little bit of grit. I wanted it to be, I didn't want peppy. I didn't want peppy music because I found it really irritating listening to on a business podcast or whatever. Um, that was a terrible, terrible bit of singing for you. Um, so I typed in trip hop into audio jungle because that's the kind of genre that I wanted. And that's how I found my music. You could record your own, be a really, yeah, I would say that's a really good idea. If you've got a musical friend to create a jingle, that is the best thing that you can do. You do just need them to agree that you can use it without crediting them, unless you want to credit them each time, um, and that you can use it for unlimited downloads and um, worldwide as well, because that's another thing that you have to think about. Um, yes, yeah, so you kind of have to get a verbal, ideally on paper agreement, unless it's like your husband or something, because I think that's fine. Will that new license cost you more? Yes, so um, the first, license cost me $14 and the new license is going to cost me 50. So it's, yeah, I mean, pound, pound per download, it's in the pennies, but it's fine. Um, there's another few um, places that I would suggest that you look at for music and I'm going to email you all after this, it'll be tomorrow, with my notes and some homework to get done before next week. Okay, so we've gone over some conceptually sort of stuff. I want to get into talking about how much time you have to dedicate to your podcast each week and editing. And they're kind of practical things you need to think about when your podcast is launched. If you're worried about the literally the steps of how to launch it, don't be, don't be worried about that. That will take you like a couple of weeks to do. Um, and I'm gonna cover hosting in this little section here as well. But just briefly, because I want you to get the overview from me now, digest it, ask me loads and loads of questions over email over the next week. And then when we come to to do this again next week, I'm gonna do a screen share and I'm gonna show you how I edit the podcast. And I'm also gonna talk about the actual steps and then I hope that we can have troubleshooting, that sort of thing in next week. But please remember that you have email support. So I don't want you to ever feel like you have a question that hasn't been answered. Um, Okay, so hosting. Um, I don't know how many of you have thought about hosting um, or if you know what hosting is um, for a podcast, but essentially your podcast has to have a house, um, the same as your website. 
I'm gonna assume that you are either on, if you have a blog, you're either on WordPress or you're on Squarespace. And you can correct me if otherwise. Um, but obviously if you're on WordPress and you are self-hosted, AKA you're with WordPress.org and not WordPress.com, then you have a host. Um, for example, I my host is SiteGround for my blog. Um, you need to have the exact same thing for a podcast and they have to be podcast specific hosts. The caveat to that is that if you're with Squarespace, you can host your blog and your podcast with Squarespace and the, you host your podcast at no extra cost. Um, so that is something to think about. If you're with Squarespace, you might want to do it all under the same roof. Um, there are downsides to that though. But they're downsides that you can get over, but you'd have to pay extra to get over them. So from my point of view, I think it's always worth just hosting with someone who is set up for podcast hosting. So there are a few different podcast hosts. One that I would recommend is Lisa Squarespace. Okay, so you don't have to pay any extra. Um, Libsyn, which is... who I use um, and they're great. They're really, really, really great. I'm not, I have no affiliate link with them. Um, so if I've spelled this right or these are the, so I've, I'm just gonna pin a comment in the top so you can see these are a couple of podcast hosts that are really well known, they're really well established. Um, a lot of people use them. Um, so Libsyn and Blueberry, or Blurberry, Blueberry. They're both pretty jazzy. Blueberry is a lot more expensive than Libsyn, um, but it offers you a lot more. However, I would really, really suggest Libsyn. So Libsyn, um, you can start a plan from $5 a month. Um, however, that and actually all hosts apart from Squarespace limit you based or price their monthly hosting based on um, space. So if you have, for example, for me, because I have a weekly podcast and they're lengthy, they're, they're normally between 45 minutes and an hour long, sometimes more, um, I have to have um, a higher hosting plan, but the maximum I pay is $15 a month. But when I, um, on hiatus, I can go back down to $5 a month um, and all of my podcasts are still live for you to download. The other reason that I really like Libsyn is because the stats are incredible. They're really, really good. And you can just have basic stats with the $15 plan, or you can, you can pay for advanced stats for five pound more, I think, or $5 more. Um, but they, it has everything I want. Um, just downloads per episode. Uh, I think it has listens. I can't really remember, but yeah, all I look at is my downloads every episode. Um, let me just check that there's no more comments. Yes, so that's why I would recommend Libsyn. The other great thing that Libsyn does is when you upload your show, each episode, um, there will be the usual sections, which are very intuitive and you just work through, put the artwork up, put this up, put that up. And then there's iTunes optimization, which by the way, we can't call Apple Podcasts iTunes because they have rebranded. So we have to call them Apple Podcasts. But there's optimization specifically for Apple Podcasts, which is quite important. Um, and they take care of things like ID3 tags, which are important. Um, or maybe they're not important, I don't know. I think they are for Apple Podcasts. <clears throat> One more thing that they do that I really, really love is that they push your podcast to lots of other directories. Um, so they publish to Spotify, um, they create um, an audio, or a, they basically publish to YouTube as well. So on my YouTube, I have a 
playlist, which is just full of what she said um, episodes. Uh, Stitcher as well, lots of other directory directories. So that's why I really love Libsyn because it just takes out a lot of faff. Once you've got your podcast approved by Apple Podcasts, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, yeah, it's super easy because Libsyn just does it all. So you just have to upload one thing. And it also gives you embed codes that you can use in your website too. So if you look at how I do it, I have a little player embedded in each blog post with the show notes. Um, and that comes from Libsyn. I don't know much about Blueberry, so because I haven't personally used it. Um, but if you have any questions, then you can always ask me or just go to their website and have a look and see if you like the look of them. Um, so that's hosting. It's a bit whistle stop, I know. We've got about 20 minutes left, so I'm just going to go over editing. So there are, to my mind, three things that you can use. Two of them are free and one is paid. Um, I'm not even going to talk about the paid one because I've never used it and I don't recommend you start with that. Um, but it's, it's basically Adobe. The two, so the two free options that you can use for editing are GarageBand. So if you've got a Mac desktop or laptop, you can you will have GarageBand. Um, Lisa, I will come back to your question shortly. Um, I have used GarageBand, but I most people really, really like editing in GarageBand and they find it really super easy. Um, for whatever reason, I really struggled with it. So I use Audacity, which is amazing. And when I teach, when I do the, um, my little screen share next week and show you how to edit, I'm either going to do it live or I'm going to just do a video so that you can, I might record a video so that you can all just watch it in your own time. That might be more helpful, I'm not sure. Or I might do both. Um, yeah, Audacity is great because it's very specific to podcasters. It has things like auto ducking, which is um, a very specific thing for radio and podcasting. When you're when you have music, so intro and outro music, and you want it to kind of fade in and out seamlessly as you speak, like I like it is for me, you can just press a button to auto duck. That's what auto ducking is, it's where it goes down when you're speaking and goes back up when there's silence. Um, it has things in for obviously fade in, fade out. Um, it can truncate silence. So if you have a podcast where there's lots of big, big silences, you can um, just press a button and truncate them. You just have to be, with all of these effects, I would say use a light hand because I got really excited when I first started editing my podcast and went mad and used all the effects and it just sounds terrible. Um, so the kind of editing style that I'm going to teach you is the bare minimum because the bare minimum tends to produce the best quality. You'll probably find that the more you podcast, the easier it gets, the quicker it gets. Um, and depending on the style of podcast that you like to listen to, you might like a very highly produced show. Um, so depending on that, you're going to want to edit your podcast in a certain way. But I would really, really encourage you to try and keep the editing to a minimum. For your own sanity as well, if I'm honest. Um, I'm going to teach you one little trick now. Um, let me just pin again. Audacity Garage Band. Um, yeah, let me pin that comment. Um, this is how I edit, and I find it super duper easy. 
when I'm speaking to, when I'm, when I'm doing my interview, if one of us fluffs something or, um, or I ask a question that I then go, oh, I want to reword that. Um, I'll stop, leave a pause and three times it right in the microphone. Then just carry on, <clears throat> ask the question again. When I come to edit it, what I'll see on the, um, in the sound waves is just the normal noise, 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 and then flat, and then one, two, three. And so I immediately know that I can go straight to that section, cut it out, and it takes me a couple of minutes. You don't have to like listen the whole way through. And often, how I edit is literally, I'll upload it into Audacity, I will cut off the beginning, I will cut off the end, and that's it. And then add in my intro and outro, and then I upload it, that's it. I don't do anything, anything more to it. Ruth, to guess mind you doing the pause and clap. I mean, then I don't really care. <laughs> as long as you're not, as long as you're not doing it every two minutes, you've got to remember this is your podcast, you're in control. Um, and I, the, I'm not creating the podcast so the guest has a space to speak. I'm creating the podcast for my audience. And I've given the option, I've invited the guest on. And yeah. So nobody's ever minded, but I've never asked them because I don't, it, I don't care. <laughs> um, so that's my top tip for editing, but obviously we'll go into this in more detail next week and over email and whenever you need. Um, there's one more thing that I want to talk about, but I want to make sure that I haven't rushed over too many things. <laughs> yeah, I think you do get a bit more, you do get more confident. At the beginning, I was so worried about what my guests, about making my guests comfortable, but also about, I don't know, not offending them, but it's a mutually beneficial exchange. They're getting free publicity. You're getting publicity from them, I suppose, and content. You're both getting content. And overall, it's just a nice chat. So I've never, ever, ever had anybody be cross. Um, I just try to keep the messing about to a minimum. And to be honest, I, the style of my podcast, I don't really worry about ums and ahs and saying things wrong or anything like that. I just leave, I leave everything in. So hosting, brief note on editing. Let's talk about artwork. Um, how many of you have thought about artwork and what you want for your podcast? Um, artwork, if you Google uh, um, podcast artwork, I feel like there's a lot of stress out there about, it's really important, iTunes won't approve you if you have the wrong artwork. And that's true, but the wrong artwork <laughs> simply means it has to be, and I'll send you these details, 1400 by 1400, between 1400 and 1400 pix pixels by, um, or that's, that's the minimum, and the maximum is 3000 by 3000 pixels. Um, and you can't have obviously anything copyrighted in it so you can't take a stock photo that um you don't have permission to use i wouldn't I, I would say don't use a stock photo anyway um it has to be clear so not a crappy photograph but mine isn't anything special and i just mocked it up in canva the picture is obviously one that i took myself and then i just layered on the what she said on Canva. I would obviously change that now. Um, Lisa, I guess the guest A doesn't care, they're also podcasters, and B, they think they know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I think that's correct. 
No, good point. Artwork. Um, Daisy, can we talk numbers at some point? Like how many downloads is usual to begin with and that kind of thing? And will we cover SEO for podcasting if that's a thing? Um, I'm not going to cover... Uh, I'm not going to cover SEO for podcasting specifically, but I can do. Um, it's exactly the same as SEO for um, your blog. Um, it's exactly the same. And as I mentioned, Libsyn does a lot of the um, optimization work for you. And I think probably Blueberry does as well. So um, there's something called ID2 and ID3 tags, which is literally tags that apple podcast requires and some people go oh, like really overboard adding shed loads in i don't even know how to do that and to my in my reading you don't need to do a lot of it um so i'm not going to specifically go over seo for podcasting because it is a thing, but it's not a thing I think is important to start a podcast. Numbers, we can definitely talk about, and I can share my numbers with you. Um, I have no idea what is usual. Um, and I think the thing with numbers in podcasting is that when I started, Apple Podcasts didn't even have a statistic reporting system, and now they do but only for the podcasts that are listened to and downloaded on Apple Podcasts um, in the app. So obviously it misses out every other type of directory. Um, and, app, and I don't listen to Apple Podcasts through Apple Podcasts, or through iTunes. Um, most people I know don't. A lot of people listen to it on your website. People might listen to it on Spotify, on YouTube. So it's to my mind it's a completely pointless number it's it's number one it's not even worth looking at um so when i started they didn't even have that libsyn give you numbers and uh like they're pretty pretty accurate squarespace do not give you any statistics um they give you uh, a, an rss feed estimate and it's not accurate at all um, and it's it's not hugely helpful or relevant. If you're looking to, first of all, uh, why why do you want to know the numbers? That would probably be my first question. You know, you know, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm always about the why. So I'm sorry. <laughs> One less thing to do. Yeah. Okay, back to the artwork. Um, but Daisy, come back to me on why you want to have a kind of barometer of what's a usual download. Because I do think knowing why is helpful. Um, do you think a photo or just logo better? I don't think it matters, Charlie. I don't think it matters at all. I think just go with your gut on that. As long as it's clear and is representative of what your podcast is about, who it's for, um, how you want your listener to feel. For example, because I want, because my podcast, I wanted it to be a bit gritty, a bit honest, a bit cool, a bit, I don't know. Yeah, all of those things. That's why I chose that picture of me as a face of portrait which I really love that picture, um, and then just put what she said over the top of it. I wanted it to just be quite obvious, quite honest, and a bit gritty. Um, what would you change about your picture then? Ah, oh, thank you, Daisy. I, lo I love my picture. I don't like the what she said, but I don't hate it. I would probably, I mean, it's in my brand fonts and brand colours, so that's good, but I might... I probably would go to Fiverr and get a designer to mock something up for me instead. No, Daisy, I don't, I'm not an affiliate for Libsyn. So, but thank you, that's kind of you. I just really like them. 
Oh, and the other thing about Libsyn, actually, just going back, is that they do have an advertising. You can, on one of the higher, um, the higher plans, you can be at, like on their advertising network. So then you would have ad adverts dynamically inserted into your podcast, and then you can earn some money from it. But I'm I don't want to do that. So. Um, yeah, so in terms of artwork, the two places that I would suggest you, you use are Canva or Fiverr. I mean, you could also use Photoshop or anything else if you're proficient with that. Um, Claire you asked me what canva is so canva is a free online um really simple graphic design tool so you can mock up all sorts in there and they have templates it's a really easy way to make nice looking artwork and if you anybody who uses pinterest um tends to to do their pinnable images pin, uh, their pins on canva Yeah, I can understand that, Daisy. Sorry if I'm jumping around. I just want to make sure that I answer all your questions before we finish. So, um, yes, I. it's a funny one with podcasting. Funnily enough, I the reason I love podcasting is because it's so blind. So I was chatting to Charlotte Jacqueline from Betty Magazine, and obviously she's got a podcast called The Fringe of It that she does with her friend um, Liv. Purvis, who I feel like I'm the only person in the world who'd never heard of Liv Purvis. <laughs> because every time I said it, people were like, yeah, Liv Purvis, do you not know her? No. Um, and I said, you know, I have quite a small, I have a really small podcast. I only get about um, 20,000 downloads a month. That's what I get, not right now, but while I'm offline, but peak is 20 to 30,000 downloads a month. And she said, that's not small. And I was like, wow, okay. I have no, I had no idea. Um, I don't know if I'm small or if I'm big. Um, and I will talk to you next week about new and noteworthy and things like that. Um, because, and the Apple podcast chart. Um, because, it's not really about numbers, if I'm honest. Um, they have a funny little algorithm where you can shoot up to number one in your section in the chart, just if lots of people review you. And don't worry, I'll be helping you out with a review strategy and getting people to review your podcast. That's important. Just getting people to really review your podcast in the beginning will boost you. Um, yeah, I didn't know that, but I, yeah. Um, numbers are, yeah, so numbers are a funny one because I think we're all quite blind to everything. I think I, I would say embrace it. <laughs> there are places, if you Google it, there'll be someone, there are um, websites saying, if you, if you have this many um, downloads a month, or this many downloads per episode, you can earn this much, or you can charge this much. But I don't fit into any of those, um, because I started earning money through my podcast um, before I before I even had a couple of thousand downloads a month, I think. I think I probably had about... Do you know what, Daisy? I'm going to go back, because I did used to record my stats. Um, I'm going to go back and have a look for you how much I got in my first few weeks, if that, if that would be helpful. Um, I'm by no means anyone's measure of success, but at least it gives you a bar. Charlie, a question I have on branding marketing, I guess, should the podcast have its own site or page? We both have our own sites and platforms, which we would like to drive traffic to us both, but also don't want to confuse people with where we direct them to. We can save this for emails. It doesn't apply to everybody. Um, 
something I'm going to talk about next week. Your your podcast does need a house. <laughs> so it needs its own RSS feed, which means that it either needs a website or it needs a page or category on your blog. Um, I think when you're doing it as a co-host, uh, I think the smart move might be to have a separate website for it. Um, And you and within that you could direct them because people will get to know you both as hosts every week you're going to be saying I'm Charlie from um, once a glimpse and and your co host um, and she'll be saying her website so I don't think it will confuse people if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah I understand that Daisy I'll give you I'll send you my stats um so I would really like to give you the opportunity you've got five minutes to just ask any and all questions also, these are my new podcasting headphones, which are brilliant, but they really hurt my ears. They really hurt my ears. <laughs> I mean, if if they're on for a really long time, which is awkward, I'm just going to give my ears a bit of a breather. I mean, I'm not hearing you. I've, I've just got the headphones in for the noise. I think maybe it would help for me to tell you what I'm going to talk about next week um so just shuffle some papers oh yeah <laughs> yeah so gear is what we're going to be talking about next week so one of the things that we're going to be talking about next week is recording so the a few setups that you might want to use and that will include gear we're going to talk about recording software so Skype, Zencaster, Zoom, things like that, how you might want to record your calls. We are also going to talk about editing, just general editing do's and don'ts. Um, and we're going to talk about iTunes, Apple Podcasts. We're going to talk about hosting and getting your podcast into iTunes. So that's what we're going to be talking about next week. Although actually we talked about hosting today, so I don't know, maybe I'll skip that. And in fact, there's something else I want to talk to you about, which is promotion. Um, because that will tie into new and noteworthy, um, how to create community around your um, podcast. Yes. Genius ways to promote your podcast. That's what we're going to talk about. So, yes, we'll be talking about gear, microphone and stuff next week. Oh, headphones hurt my ears. I'm glad it's not just me. How long do you normally expect an interview to take? Do you ask people to set aside an hour or longer? I'm hoping to make episodes of about 35 to 45 minutes, I think. Yep, an hour Yeah, I would say, Rebecca, set aside about an hour. So normally when I send out the, um, I have a Calendly link. Um, Calendly is really, really good. Um, I'm just writing down notes because I need to send you all of this afterwards. Um, Calendly is really good because people can just book in a time and I have a specific time slot for um, 
podcast interviews, I set aside an hour and I aim to wrap it all up within the hour. In fact, I do always wrap it up within the hour. The only time that it goes over that is if it's someone that I'm friendly with and then we end up chatting and that's, that's kind of fine. You won't be interviewing people to share with their communities. Yes, yes, Charlie, okay. Um, um, there are so many different ways to promote your podcast, but I, and I appreciate that I'm obviously coming at this from the point of view of how I've done it for me. So, but I presume that you'll, you will want to do this course with me because you like the way I do it. So I'm just going to make that assumption right now. Um, Daisy, yes, you don't know how to re actually record the audio. That's fine. Um, we're going to talk about that next week. And also, please remember that if you have any questions, you don't have to wait until next week. Um, so just to reiterate, next week, we're going to talk about, I have to turn my page again, recording. <laughs> So we're going to talk about the kind of tools of the trade, uh, home podcast setup when you don't have a studio, which I'm presuming none of you do, um, recording software, um, editing, and we're going to talk about promotion. And then I'm going to have a big chunk of time for you to ask a lot of questions like we have today. Cool. Okie dokie. So, does anyone have any more questions? Has this been helpful? Has this met your expectations? Exceeded them? Uh, fallen way short? <laughs> Let me know. I probably shouldn't ask that question because it just assumes um a lot i don't know <laughs> how the hell do you do it when you have a small person at home oh charlie yeah that's tough um you i think you've been listening to what she said from the start so you know that when i started recording and i'll talk about this a lot next week when i started recording and please go back to my first episodes in fact I think I'm going to make that some homework as well. I'm going to put a thread up in here after we finish this call and it's going to have homework for you all and some of the notes from today. Um, and I'd like you to complete said homework. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so some of those first, all those first episodes were recorded. Some of them when I was pregnant and some of them when I was just breastfeeding and IS. Some of them were really, really hard. And, and obviously for you, it's a lot harder. So I would say basically you have to do it when he's napping or, but it's really nice to have the human element um, of hearing your baby yabbering away. I suppose the only time it becomes difficult is it when they're really, really mobile. You absolutely can continue chatting amongst yourselves in the group. I would, I would love that. I, that's why I wanted this Facebook group as well, because there's just nothing like the support of other women. <laughs> yeah, please continue chatting amongst yourselves. And if there's anything that you want a specific answer from within the group, um, if you post something and other people haven't seen, I don't think that's going to happen because there's only like nine of us in the group then tag me or tag um, my VA, Gemma. She's in the group as well and she's an admin um, and one of us will get back to you. If you're having any technical difficulties with accessing anything, then give me a shout. Please email me with any and all questions. I'm here to support you and to get your podcast in people's ears ASAP. So no question is too small. Oh yeah, that's a good idea, Lisa. Maybe um, I'll just pop an introduction thread maybe in the group so that you can all get to know each other. 
good idea. Okay, I'm going to go because I need a wee. Bye. Love you all.